The Republic of Georgia sits at the gateway to Europe, with Russia to the north, Turkey to the south, Armenia and Azerbaijan to the southeast. It has a rich indigenous culture that also reflects influences from all its neighbours. Georgia is an area rich in limestone gorges and caves, and the northwest region boasts not only the deepest known cave on Earth, the Krubera Cave, at over 2,000 meters deep, but also the largest cave in the world, the New Athen Cave. Up until about 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals and early modern humans shared this environment and had done so for some tens of thousands of years. Ron Pinhazi is an archaeologist and biological anthropologist based at University College Cork in Ireland. His research interests include the Middle Upper Paleolithic transition in the Transcaucasus, the Mesolithic Neolithic transition in Europe, and the evolution and dispersal of early Holocene populations. The aim of the project is uh, to look at the uh, middle to upper Paleolithic transition in, uh, in the region of Imereti, which is western Georgia. It's a continuation in a way of my uh, Science Foundation of Ireland project, which investigates uh, phylogeography of Neanderthals in the southern Caucasus, which we are where we are now, and comparing it to, uh, to the northern Caucasus, uh, which is over the Greater Caucasus range. So we are in the so to speak, the southern slopes of the Greater Caucasus, which was a major uh, geographic barrier, <laughs> potentially to modern humans and Neanderthals. And uh, we started excavating this cave only this year, although uh, it's been investigated or tested already by the French team, uh, led by Marie-Hélène Mancel and by uh, Nika Tushobamishvili, uh, where they found both Upper Paleolithic and Middle Paleolithic artifacts, indicating that both modern humans and Neanderthals lived in this cave at some stage. Now, uh, the interest of our team is been formed by the fact that we have a very deep 45 to 47 meter uh, pit at the back of the cave, which is uh, starting from a diameter of about seven meters and uh, going vertically down, uh, drop for about 45 meters to a narrower um, outlet of about three, uh, diameter of three meters. And the uh, interest in this pit is that it's been investigated by some um, uh, alpinists and speleologists, and there are lots of uh, both human and animal bones at the bottom of it. Now, so far, we, uh, we only got some dates of medieval human bones, and we also have some animal bones that we are analyzing now. It was necessary to build uh, infrastructure to start this project. This is a very complicated project, uh, very uh, technically challenging, and safety, and so on. And so we had to wait two years until uh, we built, together with joint funding this uh, mechanical elevator, like a mining elevator, so we can actually uh, reach the pit. Because reaching it by ropes is not practical. I mean, it's possible, but it's not practical for carrying out sediments and actually carrying out excavation. So now it's the only beginning of this possibility. So we started it now in this, in this season, and we also uh, have a date of 23,000 for one of the shelves coming out of the pit of a cave bear, suggesting that the pit may have potentially very old uh, animal and human bones. We believe it from the dates that the preservation of the bones is fantastic, 
perhaps because of the cold temperature and because of the karst environment, which is good for bone preservation, also for human and animal DNA. So we hope we can get a lot of information about DNA of animals in this region, which is very interesting, and it's done in collaboration with people at Trinity College Dublin and University of York and University of Mainz. And um, at the moment, we are uh, starting to work uh, where the French team and us are working at the front. We are doing, so to speak, regular excavations at the front, exposing layers, understanding the, the geology and geoarchaeology of the layers, uh, understanding the fauna, the animal, the subsistence, the lithics, and so on. Uh, we also did, together with, uh, with the UCC collaborators, uh, two trenches, uh, one in the further in and, and for, uh, one even further in to understand whether there was first human occupation or Neanderthal occupation inside the cave uh, between the pit and the front. So we're talking about approximately 60, 70 meter corridor. And uh, so far we already found lithics at the, at the pit that Kieran excavated, about 15 or more, uh, potentially upper paleolithic and maybe middle paleolithic too. And we also found some lithics further in less, but we found some stone tools further in. So it suggests to us that possibly we have um, human occupation inside the cave. And this is, of course, already very interesting. Why were they occupying the insides of the cave? And what was the relationship to the pit? If there was a relation, did they use it for refuse? Did they use it at all? Did they accidentally fall in? Uh, did animals fall in? Uh, this is now investigated, but it's very complex because this cave uh, has very complex and long-term uh, formation processes with periods where now we believe it was originally completely filled with sediments, perhaps a long time before humans ever came here. And then uh, various rock falls, various uh, washing uh, of the sediments by one way or another, and dissolution. And uh, we have uh, remnants of that on the walls and all sorts of things. And so basically for us, it's a, it's a challenging pro uh, project because it's a new type of project. First of all, in Georgia, but anyhow, it's a complicated project because it really requires interdisciplinary work because normally archaeologists are mostly working on the outside of the cave or the first part of it. They don't normally dig deep caves. They don't normally dig uh, karstic pits that are 45 meters deep. And therefore, uh, that's probably why I started this project because I thought it was an interesting challenge. And uh, we far from knowing exactly what we, we're going to get. I mean, we're certainly gathering information but it's going to take several years until we get, uh, we might get human fossils, we might get very exciting things, but it's, it requires very uh, thorough work with uh, geologists and so on to understand, first of all, the cave and the environment. The reasons for the failure of Neanderthals and ultimate success of early modern human beings have puzzled archaeologists, but recent excavations in western Georgia have provided new data concerning this early example of human Darwinian competition. Evidence of these early humans dubbed Homo georgicus comes from fossils found in Georgia that are over 1.8 million years old. One theory is that these early modern humans may have even been a separate species of Homo, predating Homo erectus and possibly represents the earliest stage of human presence in the Caucasus. Fossil skeletons have also been found, showing it to be a species, primitive in its skull and upper body form, but with relatively advanced spines and lower limbs. However, another theory is that Homo georgicus is not a separate species, but rather represents a stage soon after the transition between Australopithecus and Homo erectus. This is the first time that archaeologists have been able to descend into the pit. It will take many more years before the sediments at the entrance, inside the cave and from the pit are fully excavated and identified. Only then will we know what the pit was used for. Homo georgicus is the earliest known species of Homo to settle in Europe and clearly making Georgia one of the most important areas of prehistory in Europe.